in three. This week, Hulu Plus finally gets on the UK bandwagon. Showtime wants you to get your sex for free. Yes. We'll recap the Emmys and give you a shot at free underwear. What? This is That TV Show, episode 215. You're listening to the podcast for TV geeks everywhere. You're listening to That TV Show with Jules Scott and Pat Gray. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us from all around TV land. My name is Pat Crane. It is. Uh, and I'm your host of the show. And with us tonight, it should be no shock to you that Jules Scott is right here. Hello, Jules. Hello, Pat. I really <laughs> don't want free underwear. I really don't. I'm you, sorry. You don't want you don't want underwear? You don't want a shot at underwear? Uh, 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 there's a shot there's, at underwear. Uh, a, no, this is all, like the worst prize ever. It's, it's, all, like, it's, it's all coming up. I don't Underwear is coming up. In the okay, show. no, 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 that's not- underwear is coming up in the show. It's up not, the it's not, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. Good. How, how are you? You're fresh back from a little bit of a vacay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm detoxing now. Oh, gosh, as are we you speak. St- well, we went out, uh, so the wife and I went up to a cabin with uh, like 10 other people, friends, you know, that, that we have that we've made over the last, over many, many years. And uh, we ended up partying. There were no, it was an adult uh, vacation, fairly close by, only a few hours away by, by car. And uh, that was, it was a good time. It was a good time. Uh, lots of beverages. Apparently that's the key to a, to a weekend away. Lots of beverages. So you're slightly pickled is what you're saying. Still. Uh, maybe. I've been drinking lots of water recently. <laughs> that's that's all I can say for sure. So when you go on these trips, do you actually like, does everybody bring their own beverages to like share with everybody else oh, or is it just? Yeah. I mean, to, uh, to a certain extent, I mean, people, you know, may bring their own favorites. Uh, they probably bring stuff to share. They, you know, like we brought a case of wine that was gone in one night. Oh, my. It was gone in one night. A case of wine? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much oh. all of it. I mean, not like all of it, all of it, but most of it. Oof. You guys are like world champs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. So how have you been this week? What have you been, what have you been up to? Well, I have been keep paying attention to all the news because there's so much news right now about television. Mm-hmm. And just kind of like... I get behind. So there's all this new stuff that's coming out, and I'm still kind of watching the stuff I was before. So I'm going to do my little broken record thing and say what I've been watching this week, but hoping that I'm going to get a chance to watch some of the new stuff over the weekend. Ah. So the same things for me. It's been uh, catching up on Dexter. Ironically, the season, the series finale happened this week. And Oh, right. Yeah. I heard it was really bad. Oh, no. Really was it bad? Disappointing. Oh. So I'm kind of in that mode. Like, we actually just went and bought. We had seasons one through five. Yeah. And so we bought six and seven. Um, We just bought them on DVD because they were on sale. Because, you know, series ending, they're do, all on sale so, so don't do, so do this or don't do this. Don't buy the last season. If the last one was that disappointing, don't even, don't even wind up, for, wind up to it. Just say, Oh, you know what? Maybe last season, the season before the last season, is the last season for you. I just don't know if I can. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be really. It's gonna be hard for me to just resist it. Right. But um, yeah, I've got a long way to go. We're only in season four right now. Yeah. And uh, and so and also everything in the world right now is focused on Breaking Bad, because it really is. Can it, you not read the news and have something in there about Breaking Bad? Oh my gosh! No, I mean people were. Ta- I mean the Emmys were this last weekend, as we as we talked about last show, and uh, Breaking Bad was right in the middle of it. It and was. How can that not be taking away viewers from the Emmys? <laughs> it took me away from the Emmys. I was watching them up until it was time for Breaking Bad, and I'm like, "See ya! I'm going to watch Breaking Bad." Right. So that's what I did, <laughs> and and it was. And I hear it's good. Oh my. I hear gosh. it's real good. And this was the second to last episode of the series. I, this sat, this Sunday is the last episode. So, 
Now, any any new insights as far as things that you want to happen for the last show for Breaking Bad? Any? I hate you. Don't do this to me that again. You, that you want to happen, not that not necessarily that it will happen, but things you want to happen. I have like I can't even. I hate you. Do You're it. Like smirking at me. Do I hate it. this. Come on. We got to this point where like they started this this season and mm-hmm. they had this flash forward that started the season and now you know how you got there right it was like the weirdest flash forward you're like uh what is that cool. and then you get there and you're like oh totally understand how they got there now i have no flipping clue because they have torn everybody down to their barest bones right. and we've lost people people have died was, it's there, uh, was, there was a show that was very successful at the flash forward um, and that was Glenn Close uh, in Damages. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever watched that show at all. But th- th- those guys, what they did was they would flash forward all the time throughout the entire season. And they would flash forward, flash forward, flash forward. And you would wonder what they were actually flashing forward to. Yes. And then by the time that you got to the last episode, you'd get there and you're like, holy crap. Yes. I cannot believe that. That's kind of where we are right now, and we've hit that point, cool. and now there's one full episode left, and I, I cannot tell you. I don't know, because I, I, you get to that point where you're just blown away. I am so blown away by what they have done, and um, I can't even... I'm probably going to fall off my chair next week, by the way, because <laughs> I just have a feeling it's going to be such an amazing show. There may show. be spoilers next week. Uh, there may yeah. be spoilers next week. So just be looking forward to that. Oh, if you're a Breaking Bad fan, uh, so I've been you saving not, it. I've been you, saving it up. You may you may either really want to listen or may not want to listen at all to next week's show, depending <laughs> on if you've seen it or not. I had so. to hold myself back for the show, prepping the show, because there was so much news and stuff and things mm-hmm. about Breaking Bad, and I only kept in a few things. Yep. Freaking yep. awesome. And then finally, I've been watching Scandal, as I told you, and I have gotten to this point right now with this, this show is- where. This is your workout show. This is my workout show. Every single <laughs> character in this show is a dirty, rotten, annoying piece of poo. That's why they call it scandal. <laughs> it's like there is nobody <laughs> on this show who isn't a lying, stinking, cheating piece of poo. Right. And it, and I love it. <laughs> right. It's I love poo. this show. There Thanks, we go. Coltrane. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that sounds like an interesting show. I need a, I need a workout show. You do. <sighs> Which means I also need to work out. You do. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you do, but it, you know what? I find it so much, it's great with the streaming stuff. You just pop your iPad and my, I have a treadmill. It just mm-hmm. props right up on the edge there mm-hmm. on the little platform. I'm yep. good. I'm just gone for 45 minutes. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. How about you? Tell me what you've been seeing. Uh, well, I actually saw new stuff this week. <gasps> new stuff. What? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it, it is the fall season around here, and that means lots of new things. Uh, and two of the things that I caught tonight Ooh. was or were the Castle season premiere. Oh, there is a big question on the table. There was. There was a big question on the table as of uh, the last show from last season, and that was Castle Proposing. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and uh, as you could probably tell, I mean, it wouldn't be Castle without Beckett, and so, of course, Beckett says yes. I mean, you know, this is this is the thing that's going to be happening. But the the strain on the relationship starts because she's also recruited to work as a federal agent in Washington, D.C. So, Castle is in New York. She's in D.C. They're trying to make it work. They're trying to figure it out. Uh, and uh, the first show, if that's any anything, uh, uh, you know, any hint as to what's to come, it's not going to work out so well because there were a lot of problems that they had. Castle came down for a, for a sneak peek weekend, you know, just like, oh, hey, let me just uh, sneak in here and say hi, you know. And uh, she was working on a, on a, you know, classified case. You'll have to watch the rest for for the actual story. Aww. Sorry. But but there were hijinks, and Castle was almost arrested. 
like twice. And, you know, because that's what he does. And we got to see some of the old guys from, from New York as well. So we got to see some of the old cast. Uh, some new members as well. It was it was a good show. The yes. other the other one that I the other one that I got to see tonight was actually uh, I got to see most of it tonight was Agents of Shield. Ooh, yeah. And and I got to see most of it. So let me tell you about why I got to see most of it. Instead yeah, of, I want to know. So, um, the DVR was recording. Dads, which really looks not all that awesome, and Brooklyn Nine Nine, which I'm actually kind of hoping is turns out to be pretty good, and also, and, and that was on uh, Fox. Both mm-hmm. of those were on Fox, and then also recording the voice. Oh, right. right. And I was watching, as I said initially, I was watching Castle. Mm-hmm. Castle went until like seven fifteen. And then I'm like, oh, crap, I got to go upstairs and watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> so that had to happen after Castle because I wasn't going to not pay attention to Castle. I was like, okay, well, I'll just go up and see Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. then. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so Coulson's back, right? A- Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And they've kind of built the the universe, this Marvel universe, uh, around Avengers. Mm-hmm. And... So you you get to a, a little bit of a snippets here and there of of the history of you know like the battle for New York is is a big thing in in that show. Um, so uh, we get to see some some exceptional people mm-hmm. that don't necessarily have superpowers, but they're very brilliant at what they do, uh, and how they kind of collide with this universe, and it's it's pretty interesting. Coulson is is you know steals the show for sure. He's the center of everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And but you know he does have his team mm-hmm. with him of brilliant people. So I am going to say it this way: I am in. I'm in. I'm into this. I am in. I'm going to be watching this every week, and I'm going to make sure that hopefully. The DVR is available next week so that I can actually uh, maybe record it. Sounds like you might want to consider taking dads off your list. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's only a half hour, so it's not going to really help too much. Because Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I still want to watch that show. So uh, it's going to come down. I I think what it's going to really come down to are apps Mm -hmm. and what the different TV apps are doing. Because I think ABC is doing full episodes so as long as I watch watch it like the next day, I should be okay. Yeah, we'll see exactly what happens with that, and and I'll be looking at uh, at my mini tomorrow and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, kind of looking forward to uh, to seeing more from Agents of Shield and J- and Joss Whedon. I mean, nice. you know, it is Joss Whedon after all. Boy. Yeah. All right. With that. Uh, let's go into the Hollywood Rewind. Yeah! All right, it's time to take a peek behind the curtain of what's happening in Holly Weird this week. And Jules, what is going on? Yeah! Okay. Yeah! <laughs> well, you already covered covered the notable show of tonight, which is Marvel's Agents of yeah! S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah! Yeah! And that one already aired tonight. Yeah. So, you know, make sure you catch it if you didn't see it. I, you know, and and also check out the ABC app because yeah. if you if you have not seen this, check out the ABC app. I will be looking at it this week to see exactly what they showed, but they did uh they did have on the full episode from Castle from last night's Castle. So, my guess is that they will have this on the app for at least a limited time. Mm-hmm. Uh so make sure if you want to watch Shield and you haven't seen, well, I'm sorry. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you have not seen that yet and it's not on your DVR or something like that, grab the app, see if it's on there tomorrow. And we got a suggestion from Lori in our chat room to also check Hulu because Hulu does yes. a lot of the network TV too. Yep. So that's a good, very good suggestion. Yep. Um, so we're going to move on to Thursday's notable shows, um, two that I have on my list, which is the Michael J. Fox show and the crazy ones. These two are going head to head at 9 p.m. Eastern. The Michael J. Fox show is on NBC. The Crazy Ones is on CBS. All right. 
Yeah, and I'm excited. So my DVR is having a war on Thursdays right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean that that kind of is <laughs> that kind of is the deal right now. Yeah, it's okay. Where does the DVR give out? Yeah, and what can you do about that? Well, I guess we'll find out. I mean, this is, this is, this is the first fall season that we've gone through on this show. So yeah, uh, it's tense times. It's tense. <laughs> This is this is like a cliffhanger suspense. That's right. How dun, will dun, Pat dun. and Jules get their TV? <laughs> <laughs> How will Pat and Jules actually watch their TV programs? Will they be able to watch them live or on DVR? I don't. Mm. I don't know. I don't. Stay tuned to the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for the next episode of that TV show, and they'll tell you all about it. Da, 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 That's what da, da, we do. Da, da. Oh. <laughs> Um, and then you can move on to Friday, yeah. Friday, September 27th. I pulled this one out because I thought it was kind of an interesting concept. If you watch Master Chef, yeah, um, that is with Gordon Ramsay. Um, you're moving into something different with Master Chef Junior on Fox at eight o'clock Eastern with kids between the ages of eight and thirteen. This is cute. I like this show. But Gordon Ramsay yells at everybody, so he's going to yell at these kids. Uh, he's not going to yell at the kids. I oh mean, yeah. Now. He's not going to yell. Is he going to yell at him? He's probably going to get pretty stern face. <sighs> well, I mean, they're kids. What what can he expect from an eight-year-old? Does he? <sighs> I mean, it's not like you're going to, like, the Cordon Bleu, you know, school for witchcraft and wizardry or whatever <laughs> whatever the hell it is. <laughs> the Cordon Bleu school for witchcraft. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they do a little bit of of cooking and then they do some witchcraft. You know, I mean, it's just, it's your standard school. <laughs> this is Gordon if Ramsay, you, not Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, I thought it was both. No. Oh, all right. Never mind. <laughs> just because they're British. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll have to find out with this one. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. I, this is probably going to be one of those shows, like if it was on TV and I was, you know, just kind of doing something. I might take a look at it. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be one of those. Oh, isn't that cute? And then you, then you hate, you know, Gordon Ramsay, and then you go back to the kids, and you go, "Come on, kids, do it! Please, go <laughs> ahead and do it." It's kind of like um, watching Double Dare. Remember that, that show? True. Oh my gosh, yeah, we talked about that before on yeah. the show. Yeah. Double Dare was awesome. Back and in the you day. know what? It just reminded me of something what? that I did see this week, and I did, forgot to write it down. You, you watch remember- Double Dare? No. Oh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they're rerunning that on Nickelodeon. I know this, which is I awesome. That's, that's a, like a, one of the greatest competition shows ever. It was. It was like early, like early '90s reality TV. Yeah. But yeah. a couple of months ago, you and I covered a. Um, I think it was a poop topic called Cut- Cutthroat Kitchen. Oh yeah. On Food Network. I yeah. saw this. Yeah, I saw it too. I've seen it. I've seen it. Dude, that show is wacky crazy and awesome and it's like you want to like screw your neighbor that's how you can screw over your neighbor right there and just (laughs) make um make like spaghetti and meatballs and you don't have any pasta yeah it's it's uh uh, cooking with jerk bags (laughs) that's what it is jerk bags Because I didn't want to swear this early in the show. That's oh, why. Oh, we'll, we'll save it till later. So yeah, I <laughs> just see this, and it's one of those shows where it was on, and I looked over, and I'm like, "What is this?" Mm-hmm. Oh, my. yeah, no, it's it's kind of funny, and it's and it's not a bad. Um, I don't I don't know what it's teaching our kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, TV teaching our kids isn't that funny? Ooh, yeah, nice babysitter. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> that's rich. All right. All right, so we'll talk about <laughs> what's announced this week. On Hulu Plus, there's some big news that fans are going to get another reason to never leave their computer. They announced that Doctor Who, Top Gear, Sherlock, Luther, and other top BBC programs will be available on Hulu Plus in the fall. Yay! Yeah, and That's so awesome. this is a great way for people to get this. And I looked this up, Hulu Plus is only seven ninety nine a month with mm-hmm. limited advertising as part of it, and you can actually try it for one week free. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great option if these are the shows that you're totally into. They're also going into some classic BBC shows like Faulty Towers, Upstairs, Downstairs, to name a few. Right, Black Adder. Black Adder. I don't know what that one is. Oh, that that's um uh uh 
what's his name? Uh, Mr. Bean. Oh, he's, he's Rowan in Atkinson. That. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and they're all they're all fantastic shows. So, oh, very I mean, nice. If, if you're a Doctor Who fan, I know lots of Doctor Who and Sherlock fans for sure. Lots of Top Gear fans. I don't know if you've seen Top Gear. Yeah, I've seen Top Gear. Yep. They they do some funny stuff on they Top do. Gear. They do some really crazy stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And so I was I actually caught that this week, and it, without even seeing this story. I, I caught some of that this week. I mean, a little bit here and there. Yeah. Um, but uh, great show. Much better than the U.S. version that they tried for a little bit, and it was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, well, but the U.K. version is great, and and um, and like all of these different shows from the U.K. are going to be fantastic. So I know this is big news this week for Hulu Plus. They're really kind of drawn in the audience a, for the page subscribing base. Yeah, that's a big get. Mm-hmm. That's what you call a big get. <laughs> I don't even know what you mean, but okay. Well, it's like it's like you know they got BBC to jump on board with those guys, and that's awesome. So, lots of good programming for you guys. I know, mm-hmm. and there's some more new programming for you, mm-hmm. even if you are not a subscriber of Showtime. Yeah, there is a new show coming out on Showtime called Masters of Sex. And this one is a series that is talking about the famous couple, William Masters and Virginia Johnson's Masters and Johnson. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like back in the back in the the 50s, talking about like very taboo subjects known as sex. Um, And this is a period drama that is going to be available on Showtime. Well, Showtime is a paid service and they have actually decided to put the pilot episode out online. So you can see it before it actually begins to air. That is a fantastic idea from Showtime. Yep. From Showtime, this is a really good idea because this could or it has the ability to suck people into the show. Yeah. Maybe enough to get a subscription to the channel. And if they just do it with the pilot, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I about, am actually, and, and it's and it's about sex, <laughs> which being you know, that's a favorite topic of yours. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna actually put here. I just thought it would be a great bit for the music. All right, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. The timing, the timing was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um. I wanted to ask you though, do you have any paid channels that you watch like HBO, Showtime, Stars? Do you do that anymore? No. Well, I I wait for it to get to to come to me for free. You do the free stuff. Like the free weekends and stuff like that? Yeah, man. I'm all about that stuff. Yeah. I don't necessarily pay for it, but I am I am mindful of what mm-hmm. those what shows are going on on those uh paid paid services. I find now, like, I don't watch, I have HBO. I do not watch any movies on HBO. The only time I hmm. really pay attention to it is if Game of Thrones is on and if, you know, so Boardwalk Am- Empire is what my husband likes to watch. Okay. But I'm hearing more and more people that are actually going to their cable or satellite provider and they're subscribing at the times where those shows are airing and then they take it out when it's done. And I, I mean- wonder if that's becoming more popular these days. Uh, probably. I mean, I, I think people are just more savvy about that stuff. Yeah. And they they know what they want. And, you know, especially if they, you know, for HBO, they don't do anything else. I mean, they have, they have the channel and then they have HBO Go, but that's only for subscribers <sighs> to the channel. And so <laughs> if you want to watch it on any of your devices, you need to actually be a subscriber. So you might as well just... Uh, pick it up when those shows are going new, so then you can have all that stuff at your at your command, right? Right, right. And usually the paid networks air the previous season in a marathon before the new one starts, so you can always catch that too. And then you know, right, you're, you're good. And then you but, don't need to buy the DVDs. I don't know. Like I just did. I don't. <laughs> I, know, I was like, what is huh. wrong with me? But I just totally did that with Dexter. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to support those shows that you really love. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they've made this, they've put in the time and money to produce this. Speaking of DVDs, 
Oh, yeah, this, yeah. This story blew me away. Okay. I, I did not expect this one to come across my my uh, inbox. Netflix mm -hmm. is... Now, Netflix is the the network, if you will, of House of Cards. Yes. And its rival, Redbox, you've heard of Redbox. Yeah. That little kiosks at different places like Walgreens and grocery stores where you can get DVDs out of that box, like sure. a vending machine. Yeah. They're running a House of Cards promotion where you can go in and rent the first one through six, episodes one through six out of their kiosks in a DVD form to watch. Okay. This is like, I, 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 it kind of blew my mind. It's like, I would not have expected, it, but they're, they're riding the, the wave of the Emmy nominations. House of Cards got a ton of them. They had nine Emmy and Emmy nominations this year, which is unheard of. Sure. So Redbox is deciding that they are going to capitalize on this by allowing their customers to see this series. Yeah, and uh, apparently the, the other half of the season will be available next month uh, for Redbox. But, you know, at, the, at some point you just go, why? How, mu how much of a draw is this going to be? I mean, obviously it's enough oh. for Redbox to, to make a move. But I'm just, I like it so much better in the original planned format of online viewing. Yeah, and this is an, an appeal to this someone. This was never meant have... to be on DVD. I, I mean, know. <laughs> it feels that just, way, doesn't it? Yeah, this is o this is only cool on, when it's online. <laughs> That's it. House of Cards, <laughs> screw it. I mean, you can't you can't watch that on a regular DVD. No, I need the online version. No, this is for your seventy five year old grandma who doesn't know how to stream <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> this so is... you. Yeah, you've got to go and bring her the DVD and say, "Here, Grandma, can watch your House of Cards, yay!" No. Right, and then she'll go, "Oh, what kind of cards are they playing? Are they playing solitaire, or bridge, or pinochle, or pinochle?" <laughs> I don't remember how to play pinochle. I, I I learned it at one point, but now I don't know. There's something I about no jacks. Idea. I have no idea. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Grandma's like, "Oh, that's nice. Are they playing?" Uh, a hand and foot or poker or what are they hand, playing? Hand and foot? What is yeah, this? yeah, there's that's one of the card games. What? It's a card game. It's is called this hand like a Minnesota foot. thing? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's a Wisconsin thing that you just aren't aware of quite yet. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. People know about this stuff. You're terrible. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. So... <laughs> <laughs> but this this is, I think, a really smart idea from Redbox, one I would not have expected. But these guys know what they're doing. They made this this franchise of Redbox extremely appealing to people. I I have not I don't rent a lot of movies. I don't look for a lot of movies, but I had my I haven't parents rented a movie since Blockbuster went out of business. I know, but when my parents were in town in May, we were like, well, let's watch some movies and nothing that we wanted to see was on streaming. So it was like, well, you could go over to Redbox. I have an app that can tell me exactly where that movie is in what kiosk, and I can reserve it right from my phone, and I can go drive over there and pick it up. If you have that app, then pick up a Netflix app and just get the thing. But it doesn't stream on the thing. <sighs> <laughs> I'm just my shaking point. my head now. I I can't do anything else. Just I, shaking my head. You you just don't get it. You don't. Get I the don't. I stuff. don't. You know why? Because I already have Netflix, so I don't need to get it. You are not the target audience. I am definitely not the target audience. <laughs> I am savvy about this stuff. These guys are just trying to trying to score a quick buck, and hats <laughs> off to them. Yeah, they are. But. <laughs> We speaking of target audience, by the way. Yeah. The Emmys, man. The Emmys blew mm. us away. Uh, and yeah, we should probably. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Let me let me cue up the music here, and we'll talk about the wrap up for the 2013 Emmy Awards last week on Sunday. All right, there we go. Yay! Yay! All right, so uh, the Emmys were not kind to either one of us. We got ripped to shreds. Well, I am so bummed, too, because I doubted myself. Yeah. And I shouldn't have doubted myself. I shouldn't have. I Well, actually, let me let me put it more bluntly. 
I should not have doubted Jeff Daniels. I had a moment of doubt, and in a moment of doubt, I picked somebody else for best lead actor in a drama series. I picked Kevin Spacey because I'm like, House of Cards. House of Cards has nine Emmy nominations. House of Cards has got to win something. But no, not that one. <laughs> Jeff Daniels, uh, big congratulations to Jeff Daniels for, for winning that for the newsroom. Uh, and uh, Jeff, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. I, I, I've I always loved you. That's never been an issue. But I didn't pick you. And for that, I apologize. I was so disappointed when I saw that because I just knew that your you heart were, broke a little you bit. You were. No, I was, I was like really happy for, for him and just sad for myself because I know that we have this bet going on, this personal thing, this this competition thing that we always have going on. So and it didn't even turn out to be a competition because there were so many freaking upsets from this, I know, this there, round. There really were. That Pat and I, we tied. Yeah. Four to four. Was it four to four? Four to four. Four to four. Four and to we, four. Yeah, and we missed everything else. Yeah. Like, uh, we missed Tony Hale from Veep as uh, Best Supporting Actor. And Best Supporting Actress was Merritt Weaver. And by the way, Merritt, so, okay, she was also guested on New Girl last season and early yep. th- early this season. Um, uh, she's from Nurse Jackie. She went up there. She was the first one to win. And she just said, I have to go and left. And everybody was so confused by her... By, by her acceptance speech, quote unquote. And it was very weird. And what she said backstage was, she said, I really didn't think I was going to win. <laughs> I and got she, nervous. And then she got nervous and flustered and she's like, I got to go. I thought that was adorable. That's adorable. It was awesome. And I, I came back after I was watching this. I got up, I came back and... There is Neil Patrick Harris standing there after the break going, Merritt <laughs> Weaver, best speech ever. Yeah, best acceptance speech ever. It was really great. They were brutal, though, on this show with the with the music playing over the, the acceptance speeches. They yeah. had like 20 seconds, and then they were starting to be played off. Well, Tony Hale got played off, and um, he was he was screaming about it. I remember, I remember seeing that. Yep. And he... <laughs> Well, he wasn't not in a bad way. He was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, they're playing the music. Uh, but it happened really quickly. And I guess the the key thing is as soon as you start bringing up uh, names that you work with, they're going to start playing you off. Yeah. It's thank your friends, thank your family, thank your fans. Get the hell off the stage. And bye. <laughs> that's what it – and that's I, – I think that is what it should be. Mm-hmm. Because those people that work with you, they work with you to get you to that place where you can make this uh, kind of effort. And then you can make it known in so many other ways other than on an award show. That's right. As far as who you work with. And yes, they should now. Um, but apparently, people still want that old school uh, acceptance speech. Sorry, it's not going to happen. Oh, I'm fighting a sneeze. <laughs> like a really wow, I was I was wondering what was going on there. I know. I saw you, and I'm like, whoa, something's happening. I don't know what. Uh, what other what other winners were there that were uh, kind of surprises? Oh man, there were a couple of them, especially the Variety series. The Colbert Report beat Daily Show, who has won for ten years in a row. And so the Colbert Report wins, and they were all like, yeah. My man, <laughs> Stephen concert. Colbert, man, he has really turned it on in the last couple of years and uh, become such a better show than The Daily Show. And, yeah. I, and I say that with, uh, with, you know, definitely with respect to The Daily Show because Daily Show is great. Mm-hmm. But Colbert Report has turned this whole uh, farce of what Stephen Colbert is supposed to be, what his character is, and and all that kind of stuff, and really turned it into, um, transformed it, I guess, over the last yeah. couple of years into into something that's really kind of meaningful and special and and fun and and different. So I that's I like the play on on the Colbert Report. Yeah, so. he totally deserved that win. 
And uh, I think that there was probably no one more surprised than him um, <laughs> about getting that. Right. But um, the other big surprise of the night uh, was the reality competition. Yep. Amazing Race has won for many years, and The Voice won this year. Yeah, yeah. So I was watching. Um, I was, <laughs> I was watching uh, the Today Show. For mm -hmm. those guys that don't know, Carson Daly is actually, um, he's actually a part of the Today Show now. Recently, yeah. Yeah. So he's he's on the cast of the Today Show, mm -hmm. and he was on the Today Show talking about the win, and he said that um, he went over to the creator who actually had the award. Uh, on him and said yeah I just wanted to you know like feel it and and touch it and and kind of hold it in my hand and maybe take a selfie with it and the guy goes oh don't worry you'll be getting one and he, he kind of freaked out and he went what you I I get one <laughs> and, and they had like an engraver right there and he had slapped on the little uh the engraving for for you know his part in it and it said Carson Daly blah 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 and so I mean, it's just really kind of cool to to see uh, the entire cast from The Voice take that away because that's a great show. They really oh, they, they, they change yeah. the competition, the singing competition show, into something kind of more meaningful for for mm -hmm. people, and that's awesome. I think they deserved it too. It was a great it was a great win for the show, and you know we enjoy it because it has so much heart. And right. there's just there's something really fun about it. The, the judges have great chemistry. They genuinely seem to like each other. So I, all good stuff there. And this is, we just missed the mark on so many of our picks. It was like, oh, man. It's difficult. Taking a look at the list that we picked from, there is no way to know mm -mm. because there were so many good shows, so many great actors and actresses and you know producers <clears throat> and hosts and all that kind of stuff that I was just like, you know, this is a tough Thing to know what's going to happen. I mean, like Ryan Ryan Seacrest didn't win for best host for reality or reality competition program. No, it was Heidi Klum and Tim Gunn. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a joke. I know. <laughs> but apparently other people thought different. I mean, I don't watch Project Runway. I don't watch oh. Bravo much at all. So, I mean, that's why it escaped me. Because, I mean, I think Tim, I think they're both wonderful people. Don't get me wrong. It's just that when you think about a host for reality or reality competition programs, I'm sorry, I think of Ryan Seacrest. That's mm -hmm. all I can think about. So, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, it, it was lots of great programs, lots of great people, uh, very difficult to pick from. And we ended up tied. We did. So, I guess, wah, the, wah. I guess <laughs> you won the first one. You won the Golden Globes, right? Yeah, I did. And then we have so the so Emmys. So we have we have tied on this one. We gotta uh, wait till the Globes again. Yep. Yeah. Two out of three. Yeah. <laughs> best two out of three. <laughs> We're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> <Waiting>. <laughs> and then it'll be best three out of five. And then it'll be so on and so forth. All right, All right. Well, whoever is ahead with that one will be best three out of five. Come on, we're doing it again. Right. Come on. Right. Uh, um, so, so there was actually a lot more going on at the uh, at the Emmys this year, right? Yeah. There's. This is our discussion topic of the night. Um, there was a very a highly debated group of people who became in memoriam segments as part of the Emmys. In yeah. fact, it was kind of mentioned throughout the show that this was probably one of the saddest Emmy broadcasts ever because of the number of high profile names that had passed away this year and received tributes. But what became more difficult was that they only had a certain number of slots where they did their little memoriam segments and they didn't really pay attention to people like Jack Klugman. Right. And, uh, you know, from from uh, the odd couple. Mm -hmm. I mean, longtime famous actor. And the sad, I mean, I, I don't know if it's sad, but it was part of a big debate that I kind of found a little sad that the Corey Monteith tribute, Corey Monteith from Glee, who passed away at the age of 31, and that people were saying that he did not deserve to be treated with that large in memoriam segment that others should have received. Sure. Well, and, and what I'll say about that is this. Um, I, I think that it makes sense from, it, as soon as you make the decision that you're going to do 
these tributes and you figure out how many you have time for and you you kind of declare okay we have x number and let's say it's five you want to i i don't know exactly how many they had i think it was five i think it was five five or or six was it five or six um but you have to when you have a limited number like that you have to decide who is going to best represent for not just not just for um their acting chops or whatnot but for their generation right mm-hmm. so you have people like James Gandolfini who passed away in Italy in in the spring uh and Cory Monteith and you have Gene Stapleton and you have Jonathan Winters and you have all of these guys and then uh you know uh Gary Goldberg right Gary David Goldberg who yeah. is the producer of Family Ties so you yep. have a producer in there as well so i mean mm-hmm. you have to you have to have variety and you have to have it kind of span the you know multi-generational content as well to make sure that you're hitting kind of everybody that's watching at some point and so I, I I think that that's fine. I I question whether or not it's a good thing to have in the first place. But I don't blame them for having Corey Monteith as a tribute right. when they had other people as tributes. Well, it was or a very tributes. watching. I saw a number of them. I saw the tribute that um, was done for Gene Stapleton was done uh, by Rob Reiner. And I saw mm-hmm. the tribute for Jonathan Winters done by Robin Williams. Yep. And the one for James Gandolfini. Um, and that was, they, what they did is they just made you cry. <laughs> it's just, yeah. these, they were very touching. They were super heartfelt. It was what they intended. Right. But when you've got these kind of up and down and up and down and up and down moments that kept happening throughout, it was almost too much. And I'm surprised that they've gone away from their own. They used to have the kind of montage where right. they would show the photos and there would be this beautiful music playing and then people would applaud and you'd hear who got more applause than somebody else. Sure. But sure. it was one part of the show instead of it being in chunks of the show. And I don't know. I felt like that was big downer. Well, part of the problem is, and maybe it's because there were so many high profile actors that, that passed away. Uh, I mean, like Larry Hagman, mm-hmm. he was he was another big one that, that passed away. I mean, like we have all these. So every year when I'm watching the award shows and they and they do these in memoriam segments, uh, they have a ten- tendency to bring up some people that I haven't thought about for you know maybe six or eight months since since I first heard about them, and I go, oh yeah, that's right, so and so passed away. Yep, and now they're just kind of pausing on those. Oh yeah, moments and and kind of expanding on the, on them a little bit more. I'm not sure if it's necessarily right for the show, mm-hmm. and it did have a tendency to slow it down a bit mm-hmm. and bum everybody out. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I, I I don't mind the people that they chose. I don't know. I still think they could have gone back to their previous way of doing things. Sure. And um, not have because what happens is is that now they've got the exclusion thing. They can't please everybody. There's going to be people upset. You give you give a strong tribute to certain folks, but I I'll bet that a large portion of the viewing audience who watch TV these days didn't spend a whole lot of time knowing who Jonathan Winters was. And I mean, I knew who he was. Jonathan Winters, oh, fantastic. Uh, I know. Oh, so brilliant. But, amazing comedian but his last big recognizable TV role was on Mork and Mindy in 1970 <laughs> which was amazing I know I remember when that was new by the way <laughs> me too <laughs> I'm just saying um, me too uh-huh. but I, I feel like they should go back to the montage I feel like it gives each person its due uh, their due and that gives them an opportunity to be recognized but it doesn't it doesn't take away from the tenor of the show, which is to celebrate the excellence of television yeah, today. And, and that really is kind of the thing is, does this celebrate TV today? Yeah. No, it, it kind of harkens, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a retro thing for the most part. It's going to be a kind of a retro thing. It's not yeah. necessarily going to be 
too contemporary because you have a lot of these guys that are passing away just from being old. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Winters is one of them, and and Gene Stapleton as well. I mean, you know, they're they're old. Yep, they lived a good long life and right. had a great career, and they should be recognized for that. But yep. at this time, it's not their it's, time. Anymore. It's not it's not a way to celebrate today's TV. Right. It's a way to kind of look back and say, weren't they great? And right. Yes, that's cool. But yes, maybe it should be more about the celebration part. I like celebrating. Me too. You know what else I, I like celebrating? What? <laughs> the transition just got weird. I like <laughs> celebrating the poop. Uh, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Not sorry. Sorry, I'm I'm yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry <laughs> that I celebrate the poop. Well, I, I do. I celebrate the poop on the show publicly. And you're proud of it. I, well, I'm well I don't know about something. proud. I'll, I'll just celebrate it. All right, so okay. what do we got on the poop this week? I'm going to give you something to contain your poop. Oh, boy. How about a pair of Walter White's undies? What? How about it? Uh, I'm in. What do you? What, what's going on with it? What's, what's I mean, happening with it? You watched the Breaking Bad first season. We watched it together. Yeah. And one of the most famous scenes in that whole season was Brian Cranston staring, standing in the middle of the road in a pair of tidy whitey underwear. Yeah. And you can win them at auction. If what? You get out. Oh, I'm not getting out. You can get them. Oh. Um, starting September 29th after the day that AMC's drama, the, the finale airs. So it is the last day of the series. You're going to be able to bid on pieces from the Breaking Bad set, including the, the undies worn mm-hmm. by the Tidy Whities. Mm. Um, you can also get Walter White's green Pontiac Aztec, which I hated that car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jesse Pinkman's and Walter White's hazmat suits, the yellow ones. Uh, yep, the yep. pink teddy bear. Oh, wow. Pink teddy bear. Uh, the bell and wheelchair from Tio Salamanca. Oh, Tio, man. That guy was creepy. Just yep. dinging that bell all the time. Yep. It was crazy. You can also get Gus's. It was, just, it was just all over the place. It was just, oh, God. Oh, he's he's trying to tell us something. He's trying to tell us something. Tio. Creepy. Oh, and that bell, because <laughs> you have not seen season four. At the yeah. end of season four, that bell yeah. is the biggest Oh, biggest news of the the uh, episode. Really? And, oh my gosh! It comes back. Yeah, he does come oh back. Boy. So yeah, you can you can do this by going uh and going to this auction and is it's doing it's on screenbid.com is the website so you okay. can auction get studio props from there if you want. If you cool. Want that. Cool. Uh, the, the uh, you know the reason why this fits so well into the poop is because it is about underwear. And I would not try to auction off underwear ever. Uh, this is. Are people really going to buy under? Would you buy underwear? I won't, but I will bet. Okay, how much are they going for? How much are going? How I, much would somebody pay for a pair? Of uh, tight like bikes? like two bucks. No. Two bucks they were at worn Target. by Walter White. Two twenty-five. Two two fifty. No. Okay, three bucks. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? What are they expecting? Oh gosh, I, I'm gonna guess that they're probably gonna go for a, at least a thousand dollars. Are you kidding? Uh, is it going to charity? Is the no. money is the money going to, to charity? Because the, then, not a thousand. I mean, they're expecting I mean, to I, raise about two million. How would you feel? How would you feel about displaying underwear in your home? I mean, I don't care if it's framed or like on a on a mannequin or I don't know what I don't know how you display it. Maybe you just wear it, which is kind of weird to me too. But uh, I mean, you know, hey, your undies, your rules. Um, but <laughs> but I mean, how would you feel about displaying that in your house? I, you could be like, uh, you know, these are my they're okay. The starting bid on this underwear, I'm looking it up right now, $250. What? $250. That's, no. 
Two fifty? Yes. I, I, I'm talking two dollars and fifty cents. No, two hundred and fifty dollars. You've got to look it up to see it. It's there. You could you could bid on those. <sighs> That's craziness. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. They have a lot of stuff on this auction too. They've got uh, they've got the leaves of grass uh, book that uh, is in Walt's bathroom. That's a big uh, big piece of prop. It's a big piece of prop. It's a big uh, piece of prop. It's a big piece of crap. It's Jesse's Hello Kitty phone is here. Yep, yeah, that one's good. Yeah. Oh, the bike lock that that murdered the guy in the basement. Oh, yeah, yeah. You I would get- actually. They'd have to pay me to get rid of that one. <laughs> yeah. No, you want to sell this? No, no, that's all right. No, that's okay. You guys can <laughs> just keep that. That's fine. These are these are amazing. So yeah, Ugh. you can you can bid on these screen screenbid dot com is the website you can go get this. The hazmat suits uh, that I can understand. At least that's useful. Yeah. So I'd pay a couple grand for that. Sure. Because they only cost like ten bucks <laughs> normally. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's just. But I just it, can't do it. There is nothing better for the poop than something like this. Come on. Yeah, it's a bunch of crap. <laughs> All right, let's yep. head off to the watch list. Ah, uh, the watch list. Uh, this is the part of the show where we take a look at shows, and we take a look at them, and we we examine them throughout an entire cycle. Uh, and, uh, you know, normally it's been a month. We're, ch- we're starting to change it up a little bit, and we're starting to say, you know what? These guys, these shows maybe deserve a little bit more attention, so we're going to watch an entire cycle or season or whatever, and we'll get back to you on exactly what's happening with this stuff. And uh, hooked or not, we'll try to tell you more about this show as we watch it. Right? Right. Is is that what we do? Yeah. Okay. So what do we have for this time around, Jules? (laughs) This time around, we are watching Being, Being Human, the UK version on mm-hmm. Netflix streaming. Mm-hmm. And this is the story of a werewolf, a ghost, and a vampire who are sharing a household and trying to fit in into normal society. Yes, it's the original odd couple. Very this is much the so. this was the original ver- this was the original vision for mm-hmm. odd couple. And I think that uh Jack Klugman was supposed to play the ghost <laughs> or the werewolf or maybe both. He probably is going to be the vampire. Because, <laughs> because Tony Randall was the vampire. Let's face you it. You think so? Oh, yeah. He's way too neat and tidy. He'd be the ghost, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't I don't know. touch anything. I don't know. Anyway, so, what's, <laughs> so, so this time around, we're watching episodes three and four. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what, let's, I want you to start this conversation. So what did you think about episodes three and four just generally? I warned you that I have my ranty pants on today. Yeah. I uh, I know you did. You, I think you might need to hold on to the desk. Uh, oh, boy. Okay, so we had some stuff happen. Yeah. Um, and- okay, so the first two episodes were focused on learning about the werewolf and learning about the vampire. Mm-hmm. And now we got into episode three, which is learning about the ghost. And what we're learning uh-huh. is what the dynamics are for each of these supernatural creatures. Mm-hmm. What, are the, what are the rules here? Mm-hmm. What is the series allowing you to do? Like the vampire can go outside during the day, but he has to wear sunglasses because he's sensitive. He doesn't to light. have to. He doesn't have to. I don't. He think. doesn't have to, but he does. Most of them. Yeah, do. It's like it's like they've uh, they've ignored a lot of the rules for traditional supernatural shows. So, like, the only things that they're really keeping to is that the werewolf changes, you know, uh, during the full moon. The vampire, uh, he's kind of a normal dude, really, in a lot of ways. Yep. Uh, He has some freaky friends. That's about it. Yep. The the ghost, she can be seen. She can not be seen. She can make tons of tea. Uh, You know, this is just from the first episode alone. We see her making tea and, and putting them in cups and moving them around the house. And, you know, I mean, so it's not like... I, I don't know what the rules are yet. It seems like there are no rules. That's rant number one. Okay. So on episode four, um, Annie, the ghost, is doing stuff around the kitchen. Yeah. She's cleaning in the kitchen because apparently she has gained a new power where she just involuntary mo- involuntarily moves stuff around the house and they, they break and 
Yeah. Um, and she's well, standing she's, in. She's, she's kind of mad. She's very mad, and we'll explain why in a minute. But she's got a broom in her hand. She's sweeping up some plates that she dropped, and they she's involuntarily moving stuff around the house. And they're like, "Can you control that?" And she says, "No." Because I really like to. I'd like to be able to get behind that refrigerator. So wait a minute. You can hold a broom. You can pick up a teacup. You can cook with a freaking plate, you know, everything on the stove and cook all this stuff, but you can't move the refrigerator? Well, refrigerators are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking around. Oh. Inconsistency was driving me crazy during this because it's like... She can pick up all this stuff. She can like bring food over to her her uh, ex fiance. Yeah, and leave it in his oven. Mm-hmm. Open the oven door. Yeah. I, I, Come on. I don't, okay. All all ghosts can do this, Jules. Fridges are a problem, however. Yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> this are. This is really stupid. <laughs> so. Ah, uh, I wanted I wanted re- consistency. I wanted consistency on like what it meant to be a ghost and what you couldn't couldn't do. And apparently, only the other supernatural creatures can see her. Um, and then she realizes at the end of episode four that she may actually be able to be seen by humans now. Well, she was seen. Happened. She was seen in the beginning by humans, if you will recall. She was chatting it up with the pizza boy. Uh, on the very first episode. That's right. So she has been seen by others. It's just that she chooses not to, and I think that it may have something to do. I, I don't know exactly what it has to do with, but she was seen. She was chatting it up with the pizza guy as he was delivering pizzas, and then she was shocked when her fiancé came over to the house and he did not see her, yep. even though she was in plain sight. Standing so right thought. in front of her. Yeah. So, okay. Right. So, the thing that I like about this series is yeah. I really like the character of George, who is the werewolf. He's I think great. he's the best thing in this whole thing. He is he is pretty great. And um but he's probably the only thing right now that has any redeeming quality because he actually has a consistent storyline of things that go with him. He changes at the full moon. Um, there's some comedy. He's got some of the best lines in the whole thing, too. Oh, yeah. And so he deals with the change and, you know, having to lead up to the change. And, you know, there's some really funny parts that deal with that. And then you get to to uh, Russell. I'm sorry, to Mitchell. Mitchell. Who is the, uh, the, the vampire. Uh-huh. So episode four. Mitchell is wanting to really integrate with the other neighbors in the in the community to be known as a human and not draw any attention. He winds up running into a young boy uh, on the street who's being bullied, and he defends him by scaring them away with his black vampire eyes. Yes, and befriends the family and gets himself into a whole load of trouble over a misunderstanding and turns the whole neighborhood against him, including the mother of this boy. Mm-hmm. So at the end of this episode, he is uh, he is in the street with the whole neighborhood around him. Mm-hmm. The young boy gets called back by his mother. She she how dare you defy me? Come home. He runs out in the middle of the street, gets hit by a car, and it and is basically terminally. He's terminal. He's in the hospital. He's terminal. Right. And. Mitchell gives him an option, gives her an option to turn him into a vampire, which she takes. No. And she does not. She does not take it. She She, took the option of him turning into a vampire. No. I don't. I don't think she. I don't think she did. How could he have recovered from that? Well, I mean, Mitchell gave her her son back, and I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know whether she took it or not because she didn't say yes or no. She just ended up crying, right? Right, and they covered him up with a sheet showing he was dead. And yes. then all of a sudden, he shows up with them standing on a train platform. Mitchell did turn him into a vampire. That okay. much we know. I don't okay. know if she actually wanted it or not. She was thankful that he did it. Okay. No matter what the decision was from her. Okay, here's my rant. Okay. Mitchell is a tortured vampire of turning he doesn't want to turn somebody into a vampire. He's tormented about 
the whole Laura thing. He turned this girl into a vampire. She's been tormenting him the whole time. Yeah. So he turns this 12 year old boy into a vampire, Mm -hmm. turns him over to his mother as a young vampire and says, see ya. Yeah. I looked at my husband and I'm like, are you kidding me? You're going to leave a human in the in and you're going to put her yeah. in custody of a young vampire and she doesn't know what the hell is going on and you're okay with this? <laughs> yeah, I I had, I had some issues with that as well. Oh my god, it made me so mad. <laughs> and there's Mitchell who then goes back into his emo brooding phase of like I turned another one. Uh then don't do it. <laughs> right. Don't do it. Yeah, I don't I don't know why he did it either. I think, you know, he felt he felt uh some kind of kinship with the kid um and with the with the mom, you know, wanted to wanted to make things right with her somehow. Yeah. And after going through the entire experience of being called basically a pedophile in, in to the whole neighborhood. Yep. And if you guys haven't seen episode 4, uh you should really uh, check it out because it it really does kind of uh, touch on some some things about misinformation and yeah and uh, I'm not saying that what they did was wrong but even though it was misunderstanding um you know whatever anyway uh so I, I think Mitchell was trying to make things right he was trying to do the best that he could and if that meant turning uh him into a the the kid into a vampire he was willing to do that. The part that I did not like was when he went, okay, bye bye, and he you, and he walked away. He's basically killed this woman because he's like, I mean, they have made such a big Oop. deal. Sorry, Ooh, sorry about that, I'm Doctor Who. Yeah, I don't know. I fired that off by mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Oh. Um. That's so sure. anyway, what were you talking about? <laughs> um. You know, they've made such a big deal of what it's like to be a new vampire mm-hmm. and how hungry you are and how confused you are and now they've made a 12 year old boy who has no sense of the world into a vampire and left him with his human mother and what does the kid say to the mom right before they end the show mom I'm hungry mom mum mumsy I'm hungry what is she supposed to do like all right kill me I I, (laughs) I don't know what she's supposed to do she's mom she's trying to I don't know what's what's going on Anyway. And now she's a human who knows that vampires exist, and they've been so blasé about it. He reveals that he's a vampire towards the end when her son is dying, and he's like, yes, I'm a vampire. See, look, you can't see me in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's trying to make uh, it right. He's trying to do what he can to make it right and, and you know, tell her what's what. They can leave Mitchell out of this freaking show. I'm so sick of his storyline already. He's very cute. <sighs> he's so emo, it hurts. Yeah. Well, and that's and that's kind of the way that it goes, right? I I think that I think that the way that I see it anyway is that George the werewolf, he is the comedy. Yes. So he's the lighthearted comedy of the tragic guy that turns into a werewolf once a month. Mm-hmm. And then you have Annie, who is the sad. I mean, very sad story. Yeah. Uh, and then you have uh, and and it turns into an angry story. And then you have. Uh, Mitchell, who is the tormented soul, yeah, or the tormented undead. I, I don't know what what whatever you want to call him. So you have those three different angles of this, and and sometimes they match up just fine. And the the, the funny thing too is that with Mitchell, when he's not completely emo, he's really kind of a happy guy. Yeah, he can be. He's like really super hopeful. And then his the the world just gets yanked out from under him, and he's uh, then he becomes all emo. Well, because he's the super hopeful vampire, and then he forgets is, about it. Yeah, and he's just like whatever. I'm not. I don't need to feed. I don't need to kill people. Yeah. I'm just going to be lo- enjoying life and enjoying my existence and being pure. And he constantly has these the other vampires coming to him saying, "You are not right. You must do this. You cannot be this way." Yeah. And it just continually upsets him he goes through his little broody phase and then he kind of re- he writes himself and then it happens again and it's like Ugh. but that whole scene with the kid and the whole thing like that was like you know what Mitchell go away 
That is so obnoxious <laughs> that you, what you just did. And now it's going to be Mr. Broody. I know we're going to get like Mr. Broody for the next couple of episodes, and I'm going to be like, shut up. Just He's Mr. Broody the entire time because he has to deal with his vampire girlfriend. Uh, he has to deal with his vampire <laughs> other friends that are really weird and, and you know, the, the cop guy that is yeah. trying to, I don't know what that guy is all about, but he's really creepy. I do not like the way that his eyes, like, pierce your soul. His through, teeth through the, are really weird. Yeah. It's when he not, smiles, it's like his face is full of teeth. It's not good. So he's got all these freaky friends and the vampire girlfriend, and now he's got vampire son, I guess. <laughs> Na- vampire vampire, vampire Vampire neighbor boy who brings the vampire paper every morning on his vampire bike. <laughs> and he <laughs> throws it at the vampire door and says, here's your vampire news to the vampire that lives inside. And so, yeah. With the werewolf and the ghost. It's with the werewolf and the ghost. But the werewolf and the ghost... They don't need werewolf and ghost news. No, it's just vampire news. That went off in a weird right. tangent. Sorry about that. So, so right now, I am not pleased with this show. <laughs> right. And I, I was so I was talking with the wife. The wife, by the way, she's watched the U.S. version of this stuff. Okay. And she has watched episode one. And she, and she was like, you know the the, you know what the U.S. really gets right is uh, the music. He's like, the U.S. music is so much better than the U.K. music. Blah, blah, blah. So that's her takeaway. That's okay. that's her insight so far. We'll see what else she's got as, as, as she catches up to us because she's going to do it. Oh, she's good at this. She can she's, watch those things fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because what does she do during the sh- shows like this one? She's watching TV. She's watching Netflix. Stealing all my <laughs> bandwidth. Son of a... Uh, so we have two more episodes to watch of this cycle. Yes. Or series. Whatever whatever they call it. What do they call it in the UK? Is it series? I think it's a... Uh, because they don't call Not it series. seasons. It could be series. Series one, series two. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. So we've got two more. So let's let's watch those. We'll, we'll kind of come to a conclusion after that series. Okay. And then we'll pick something for the time after that, which I think that's fair. I yeah. you know, think we've given it enough shot. Enough shot. I've enough of shot a shot. Enough. <laughs> enough of a shot. Pick something. <laughs> pick pick one <laughs> phrase over the other. Words are hard. Yep. I talk good. <laughs> me me talk pretty. <laughs> All right. We should do a podcast together. <laughs> That's right. Hey, I've got an idea. I can't talk, and you can't write. Let's do a podcast together. Boo! Boom! <laughs> Done deal. All right. Speaking of not writing anything, let's go into the hit list. I don't know what that has to do with anything, really. You really can't talk now. You're just, like, reaching for stuff out of the air and plucking it. Yeah, well... At least I can form a sentence. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right, so what do we have for this week's hit list? Well, you know, it's Emmy-themed episode, so we'll stick oh. with the Emmy theme again with our hit list. Yes. This is Emmy's biggest snubs, actors who have never won an Emmy. Mm. You'll be surprised by this list. Right. Uh, first up, we have Jerry Seinfeld, only the, like the biggest name in comedy in sitcoms in the early 90s. And he had, like, five nominations in a row. Yeah. And his series won Best Outstanding Comedy Series in 1993. Right. Jerry Seinfeld, however, has never won an Emmy for him. Maybe it's because he talks like this. What's the deal with lists like this? <laughs> I don't know. That was very bad. Right. <laughs> right. Next we have John Hamm from Mad Men. He also has had five consecutive nominations and has never won. That's crazy. What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, that's, a, that's a very bad John Hamm impression. I, yeah. Speaking I don't of, know. Speaking of bad John Hamm impressions, uh, also uh, on the hit list is Angela Lansbury. She never wow. won. She never won. Uh, you know, we know her from Murder, She Wrote, or our grandparents know her from Murder, She Wrote, and in uh, many other shows as well. Uh, so, but yeah, never won an Emmy. 
Amazing. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. I think this one was probably the one that I went, no way, on the list. And that is Andy Griffith. Yeah. He has never won. He's never even been nominated. And that was for the Andy Griffith show. He's never nominated. But his co-star, Don Knotts, won five Emmys for his supporting performance in that same show. Wow. Wow. And he was, I mean, Andy Griffith was on like three or four huge shows. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. He was only nominated for one time in his career, and that was for a supporting role in NBC's 1981 TV movie Murder in Texas nomination. Weird. Weird. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, Another one that has never been, uh, never won an Emmy is Courtney Cox. Mm -hmm. All of her friends have on Friends. Lisa Kudrow, Jennifer Aniston, you know, they 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 got Emmys, sure. They they were nominated. That oh, they, they were, were nominated. Nom- yeah, um, and Courtney Cox never even I received thought, a nomination. I thought they won too. Didn't they win? I want to say maybe. Yeah, Jennifer they won. Aniston. They won one each. They and they had uh, six nominations for Kudrow and five for Aniston. Oh yes, one Emmy. Okay, there it is. One Emmy each with yes. six nominations. I knew, yep. I knew that they won one. <laughs> Honestly, I think it was Courtney Cox's character on that show that that caused that because she was so irritating that I don't think anybody could stand to give her. An or nomination. maybe it's just that people realized that the other ones were better. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and one of my non-favorites, Jason Alexander. Not one of my non-favorites is. I don't like him at so all. So and so. I will not watch anything he's in. I do not really? like him. Um, and so watch, Jason Alexander. Did you watch Shallow Hal? That movie? Probably not. No. It's not really for you anyway. Mm-mm, no. Mm-mm, no. <laughs> not my thing. Um, and uh, he did actually get nominated <laughs> seven consecutive times for Best Supporting Actor for George Costanza's char- the, the character of George Costanza on Seinfeld, but he never won. Right. And people say, oh, you know, it's all about being nominated. But being nominated seven times and not winning is going to be a little tough. (laughs) Uh, And the dreamiest guy on TV ever, George Clooney, he never won an Emmy either. And even even though, like, ER uh, was nominated uh, 124 times, he was never even in contention. He was nominated twice for playing Dr. Doug Ross. Yeah, but, but he didn't win. But he didn't win. Suck I it. I don't think he deserved Suck it, to Clooney. Win. Suck it, Clooney. You don't deserve it. But he, you know, he, now he's Oscar guy. So, I mean, who who really cares? I know. Who cares? He's like Oscar right. guy. Emmy's. Right. He's George Clooney. He lives in, he lives part-time in Italy for crying out loud. Yeah. Who cares? It's all good. What, did you go visit him when you were in Italy? Uh, y- yes. I went and visited him, and he was not there. So I just took a bunch of stuff from his place. Perfect. Right. Because I figured, when am I going to be back there again? <laughs> That's right. Who cares? And that is this week's hit list. I I may have to change that sound. <laughs> you say this every week. I know. Well, I, it may have to happen. But that is the end of this show Uh, with the end of that hit list. So uh, I will say it this way. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Thank you very much. And if you would like to get a hold of us for any particular reason, uh, tell us about stuff that you're watching. Uh, Tell us to watch stuff over the, you know, especially with the new fall season. If you have a show that you just love and you want us to take a peek at it, send it into the show. Do it. Uh, You can email us at thattvshow at gmail.com. You can get a hold of us on Twitter at thattvshow or individually, isn't that right, Jules. Why that is correct, you can find Pat on Twitter, Pat Crane with a K, and you can mm-hmm. find me, Jules, at Jules RPG. That's right. Uh, we also have the forums on our website. We also have the website on our website, which is thattvshow.net. Uh, and please don't forget our friends over on the All Star uh, Network, Signals Media. Dot com. Lots of cool shows are over there. Lots of great shows. Uh, lots of fun shows. We have other shows over there as well. So go to SignalsMedia.com. Check them out, please. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Thank you, Jules. Thank you, Pat. This was fun. All of our Emmy stuff. It's a good show. And I'm glad that we tied. Kind of makes me feel a little bit better about myself for not actually losing this time around. 
I'm okay with it. I'm not. I'm okay with a tie. No, I'm not. Well, are you going to be back next week? Yeah, I'll be back next week. All right. <laughs> That's all that matters. So we'll be back next week. I think at our regular time, Tuesday yeah. night, 9 p.m. Central, uploaded by Wednesday at some point. Uh, that may be changing a little bit in the future. We'll talk about that later. Uh, for Jewel Scott, my name is Pat Crane, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. This podcast is a part of the Signals Media All-Star Network. For more information on this and other fine shows, go to SignalsMedia.com. It's okay to stick our stuff in your ears. Really? Really? Yes. Really? Really? <laughs> stick it in your ear! Ah! No!